All right. I'd like you to all think about your jobs, children's futures. Do you ever wonder that what they are learning today will actually matter 10 years, five, even one year from now? And how many of you are quietly afraid that AI might actually be coming for your job and one day take over the world? And how many of you would love it if AI could do the washing up? Do the washing. Or maybe just even fold the laundry without eating one of your socks. That's the world. That's our reality. Uncertainty, rapid change, and fear. But we also have hope. On one hand, AI can feel like it's coming for everything. But on the other, it's the best life admin assistant ever created. So here's my question. In a world where AI can feel like it's can do almost everything. What's left for us humans? And more importantly, are we raising children, our future leaders, to answer that question? So here's my promise to you. Over the next 12 minutes, I'd like to walk you through a framework, a proven framework, that's working right now in businesses, homes, and schools, that will help us develop leaders our future desperately needs, leaders that are creative, Leaders that are curious, leaders that are emotionally intelligent, and above all, leaders that can adapt. Because right now, behind the scenes, there is a huge shift happening in governments, corporations, even in education, to an AI-first mindset. So what does this mean? It means that if AI can do it faster, cheaper, or just even more consistently, you start there first. Now that makes sense for some things, like logistics. But what about the people? So in an AI-first world, how do we make education human-first? And more importantly, are we raising children, our future leaders, for that world? Now sadly, in schools right now, attendance is at an all-time low. Engagement is plummeting. And honestly, can we really blame the students when we think about it? When the outside world is changing so fast. But you step into a classroom today, it's like stepping into a time machine and going back to the Roman era, thousands of years. You've still got the teacher up the front. You've still got children in rows, just now sitting at desks, passively learning to a curriculum. A curriculum that's 250 years old for the best part and hasn't changed. It was designed for factory work. We no longer need factory workers. We need innovators, we need leaders, we need change makers. And if we don't do something about this, we're not just holding our futures back and our students back, we're holding everyone's futures back. Now, for decades, we've been living in the age of knowledge. Facts, data, repetition. And it worked. It's got us to where we are today. But the truth is, it's not going to get us to where we need to go. Because we've now stepped into something so much more powerful. And that's the age of humanity. And it is really time for us to connect with our humanness. To be more creative, to be more curious, to build stronger connections. Because humans have always been the architects of what's next. While technology is the master of what already is. But we are going to have to gather the troops to weather this storm and be brave. To truly cross from the age of knowledge and step into the age of humanity. Which is the exact reason why I've named this framework that I'd like to share with you today. The Brave Framework. It's five key strategies that will help us develop leaders our future desperately needs. So let's begin with the first one. So what does B stand for? Well, B stands for building curiosity. And curiosity is around us in big and small ways, all of the time. And I'd start, like to start with something small, tiny, in fact. Now, it's one of those rare, warm days we get here in the UK. And I was out in the back garden, just sorting out the veggie patch. Nothing fancy, just getting it ready for spring planting. And that is when I saw him, just quietly basking in the sun. Completely unaware, his day was about to dramatically change. So I gently picked him up and I moved him to one side and I called my little boy over. I said, say, hey, come over. We've got a visitor. 
and Seb knelt down behind, beside him. And just like that, he had a name. Gary the Snail. <laughs> <laughs> now, Seb didn't just get up and run away. We grabbed some lettuce scraps, a plastic container, and we built Gary a snail-sized paradise. And then came the questions. Daddy, how old is he? Daddy, where does it go when it rains? Daddy, can he come inside? Daddy, can he sleep on my pillow? <laughs> One tiny snail, dozens of questions. And that's curiosity in its raw, rare, unrestricted format. It's absolutely beautiful. And research shows us that children under the age of five typically ask around 300 questions a day. Just ask any parent. But if we fast forward just a few short years, that number, that number, drastically drops to single digits. We've replaced curiosity with compliance. Yet what do we look for in our leaders, in our businesses, in our teams? Curiosity. We want people to ask more challenging questions, to be different. So maybe it's not that us as adults don't have curiosity, I have that skill. Maybe it's just being educated out of us. So instead of teaching curiosity, let's protect curiosity. So here's my first action point. Once a week, allow students to create whatever they want, using AI as their creative companion. No marks, no judgment, just pure curiosity. You can do this at home. You might be shocked at the results that you get. Okay, strategy number two. What does R stand for? Well, R stands for reframing failure. Now, failure in the real world often feels scary, but in virtual reality, you can blow up a planet. You can redesign gravity, fly a rocket to the moon, and then just hit restart and do it all over again. And in fact, just last week, we took students on the Apollo 11 mission to fly to the moon and attempt to land the lunar module, just like Neil Armstrong did, and Buzz Aldrin. And many of them failed, again and again and again. But each time, they learned a little more about history, problem solving, physics, collaboration. Because failure didn't feel scary anymore. And when failure doesn't feel scary, learning becomes so, so powerful. So here's my second action point. Once a month, allow students to go on a VR simulation, fly a rocket to the moon, create an ecosystem, and allow them to fail. But ask this one question. What did we learn today? Because we failed that we could not have learned if we got it right the first time. Action point number three. Sorry. Strategy number three. What does A stand for? A stands for Amplify Empathy. Now, it's really difficult to learn empathy in a textbook. But you can learn empathy by seeing the world through someone else's eyes or walking in their shoes. Now, we've taken students back to World War II, the Cold War, civil rights movements and others. And those same students have had conversations with reconstructed characters like Winston Churchill, John F. Kennedy, and seen speeches unfold in real time, decisions unfold in real time, not just through video clips, but through reconstructed characters that are emotionally balanced but grounded in history. It lifts the lessons off the page and makes it real. Because when it's off the page, it becomes a lived experience. So here's my third action point. Every two months, I allow students to go on a VR experience again. Take them back in time to solve an eco crisis, a history crisis, and ask these two questions. How did it feel to be there. And what do you now understand that you didn't before? All right, almost there. What does V stand for? Well, V stands for valuing creativity. Now, creativity is no longer a bonus skill. In the age of AI, it's a survival skill. Now, we've taken students using AI to compose beautiful music in a studio. 
people, students have had a business idea, created a business plan, a pitch deck, and then presented it. But the one that sits with me the most in my heart are students that are petrified of speaking in public, let alone on a stage like this. We get them to put a VR headset on, sometimes speaking in with a virtual audience, sometimes with a simulated audience. And all of a sudden, they stand a little taller. Their confidence gains a little more. And the magic happens. Something just clicks. But the best bit is, when they take that headset off and they go back into the classroom, that confidence follows them through. They are more confident. They are more articulate. Because when we make space for creativity, we don't just unlock imagination. We unlock identities. So here's my fourth action point. Once a term, allow students to create whatever they want, a prototype, a song, a business idea, but have them present it in whatever format that they choose to, on paper, on a laptop, in a VR environment, but have them present it with those public speaking skills. And the fifth and the final one, now, if you haven't written any of the others down, please write this one down, because this one is about empowering teachers and educators. It blows my mind that we do not protect our teachers more than what we, sh we are. I've seen teachers that have got decades of experience, either on the verge of quitting, or sadly, or had quit. Not because they've lost their space to teach, but they're drowning in paperwork and admin. But well, we take those same teachers and allow them to use AI as their creative assistant, their admin assistant, to help with lesson planning, personalised feedback. And they start to gain a little bit more space. And then we layer on virtual reality. The imagination just unlocks. And not only do they start teaching again, they start leading because they've found their spark. And this happens not in years, not even in months but in weeks. So here's my fifth and final action point. If you're a teacher or an educator, do yourself a favour and use AI to help you with your lesson planning, personalised feedback, engaging with students in the classroom. Just one task a week, that's all. Because over 52 weeks, over 52 weeks, you've but you will have gained hundreds of hours back in your time. Reinvest that time into what's important, your personal health, building stronger relationships, and please, please, build engaging lessons that spark creativity and curiosity, because our futures depend on it. So here we are. We're on the edge of a future that we could barely imagine just 10 years ago, that's been shaped by technology. We have children that are locking up at us, not just for answers, but also for hope. But what have we done? We've taught them to memorize, follow along, and play it safe. But our future is not going to belong to those that can memorize, follow, and play it safe. It's going to belong to those who ha can ask bigger questions that are more curious, so let's stop waiting for someone else to fix education. Let's start building classrooms that inspire curiosity and creativity. Let's empower teachers and, for Christ's sake, allow AI to help us with our teachers and building amplify what makes us more human inside. Because we need to stop preparing children for a world that already exists. We need to prepare them for a world we can barely imagine. And that future, that future starts now. And it starts with all of us. My name is Colin Cooper. Thank you.